so pit, oh yeah, hands are crazy. What is up, everybody? We are back with everyone's favorite Steeler show this side of the Allegheny. It is the Chris Wormley show. It's been kind of tough for Steeler fans these last couple weeks, but us diehards know that we're here for the long haul. And I am here with none other than Steelers Twitter himself, Mr. <laughs> Michael Nicastro. How are you feeling tonight? Man, I, I felt better, at least in terms of Steelers land. Uh, you know how we do over at yenzocrazy.com. We love the Steelers. We love Chris Wormley, but we also got to keep it 100. Um, and, and they've obviously been terrible the past, uh, yeah. you know, four quarters, obviously. And Although then the defense was, in eight quarters. Yeah. If there was one shining star, I would say that Chris Wormley, that, you know, he got the sack as I, as I predicted. So if anyone yeah. has been playing well, it has been Big Worm, and we're fortunate to talk to him every week during the season. Yeah, and knowing Worm, he's going to come on here in a matter of minutes. We're super excited to talk to him. He'll downplay that, of course, because it's not relevant in the big picture. Uh, the fact of the matter is the Steelers haven't won a football game in three weeks now, going back to the tie against the Lions, the loss against the Chargers, and then just the shellacking to the division rival AFC North Cincinnati Bengals, which – you never see it from a Mike Tomlin coach team in a huge, huge spot. So some obvious reason for concern. But like you said, we're in it for the long haul. The season is nowhere close to over. Six games left, and the Steelers are a game and a half out of the playoff picture. Yeah, and I mean, it, it is looking bleak, and, you know, that, that Bengals loss was really tough. But, like, the, the Steelers are the type of team that they'll, they'll come this week and beat the Ravens, and then we'll be right back in the thick of things. And I, I don't really know, you know – I do think it is time to like wake up and be like, okay, like we need to start, you know, making some changes within this organization. And, you know, um, but the yep. biggest thing is, is it, again, I, I never count Mike Tomlin out and I do never count the Steelers out, but there's definitely after this season, you know, some, some big decisions that are need to be made uh, moving forward because we've been so fortunate with, you know, just great Steeler football, a hall of fame quarterback, but uh, unfortunately, all good things come to an end, and uh, it looks like that window is closing. But, you know, hey, I hope that the that the Steelers go out there and kick butt these last six games and prove everyone wrong because that's that's what we want. But, uh, yeah. yeah, it's just – it's been rough, man. But, you know, we're going to talk to someone who's in the locker room and, you know, get, get his take on it and see where the mindset of the Pittsburgh Steelers are. Yeah, man, no question about it. And and you said that the Steelers usually bounce back in a big spot. They certainly have that opportunity against the Ravens this weekend at home. They fared really well against Lamar Jackson in the past, and the Ravens have played a lot of close games this season. But what concerns me is I felt like last week was that big spot, too, and they, and they didn't show up. They would tell you themselves, just listen to what Cam Hayward and TJ Watt said. They called it embarrassing. We'll talk to Chris Wormley about all of that coming up here in a matter of minutes. But first, got to thank our awesome sponsors. I'm going to start with case-specific meal prep. They're the most efficient meal prep service in the 412, delicious meals. You get chicken, you get beef, you got your proteins, vegetables, grains in there. And I tell you what, they deliver them all right to your door. Uh, whether you're getting your kid on the school bus or trying to watch a Chris Wormley show in time, have an efficient meal prep service. CSMPPGH.com, you can see it at the top of your screen. And I'll let Jordan tell you guys a little bit about our other excellent sponsor, John and John over at Steel City Wheelhouse. Yeah, so Still City Wheelhouse, I can't say enough. Um, they're just such good people over there. Um, again, it's getting cold out. They got the automatic car starters, winter tires, ride now, um, pay later. You, you just can't beat it. It, it, it is, it's a beautiful facility. They have one in the Meadowlands in Washington and then another one in Imperial. So you can check them out, stillcitywheelhouse.com. I know I'm going to have to be going there for some uh, winter tires and maybe even a remote starter if I can talk my wife into an early Christmas gift. But, uh, yeah, man, check them out, and you will not be disappointed. And, again, man, we, we thank our sponsors because they're the one who, you know, power this show. And uh, yinzercrazy.com, man, your new home for Pittsburgh sports. It's that simple. Tell you what, ride now, pay later. The Steelers need to ride now or, yeah. They will pay later. There's no question about it. Let's talk to one of them right now, a key contributor on that defensive Big line. Word. It's number 95, Chris Wormley. And what's up, everybody? We're back with number 95 himself. Chris, how you feeling, man? Uh, I've been better, guys, to be honest with you. Uh, it's been a rough couple weeks. Um, but uh, happy to talk to you guys. Excited about 
Uh, this upcoming week is going to be a big week for us. But, um, yeah, these past couple weeks have been a little rough. Yeah, so, you know, with that being said, we're going into week 12. You know, how does the body feel? You know, how are you health-wise? Uh, health-wise, I mean, um, uh, our B.J. Finney, number 67, I always ask him. He's, he's my locker mate, and he's always like, uh, I'm attached. And uh, I kind of feel like that's how it's, how it's going to be for the next six weeks. Um, <laughs> body's sore. Uh, body's, you know, there's always these random – little little nicks and, and bruises and stuff like that I find a couple of days after but uh, for the most part feeling good and uh but yeah for for uh, now I'm just I'm just attached we'll, we'll go with that yeah so obviously you know it was a tough loss in Cincinnati um the past three weeks you know the defense has let up the most rushing yards in the NFL um you know can you kind of just talk about that what what has been the struggle and you know kind of trying to find you know hopefully change it up this week with the Ravens, but you know, what, what's been going on these past three weeks? Yeah, it's definitely um, a point of concern for us, especially as a defensive lineman. That's something that uh, we pride ourselves on. And that's something that these, like you said, the last few weeks we haven't done uh, efficiently and we haven't done even an okay job of it's, it's been pretty uh, it's been pretty tough to uh, stop the run on our end. Um, but some of the stuff that when we you go back and you watch film, it's, it's some stuff that you don't even have to coach. It's things that, um, don't need a lesson that don't that doesn't need to be um, introduced again on a, on a coaching level. It's just a matter of us going out there and playing steer football uh, the the way we can, the way we did against the Browns uh, when we for the most part shut down Nick Chubb. Um, and we need to get back to that. We need to get back to that real soon before before um, Baltimore comes this week because um, as you guys all know, they they have uh, uh, an, am an amazing rushing attack when it comes to Lamar. Um, and, and the backs that they have. Um, so we got to figure it out quick, but it's not something that we need to teach or, or coach up. It's just us going out there and playing ball. Yeah, I don't want to throw your guy B.J. Finney under the bus anymore, but anybody who didn't get to see our live Chris Wormley show a few weeks ago, we did some Steelers superlatives with Chris, and I think we asked you who the chattiest Steeler <laughs> was, and you said B.J. Finney. So I like connecting it now that he's right next to you in terms of the locker room. Yeah, I guess, I guess it makes sense. I guess yeah, it's more of a proximity thing, I guess, but um, <laughs> yeah, he, likes, he likes to chat it up. Shout out BJ Finney, no question. Uh, a guy that's obviously been with the Steelers uh, for a while, been back and forth. Some other veteran leaders, of course, this week include guys like Cam Hayward and TJ Watt that have, you know, essentially tried to rally the group. Cam said this wasn't Steelers football these past few weeks. TJ Watt called it embarrassing. Um, those are some strong words, obviously, Worm. You yourself, you're a vet in this league at this point. You guys feel it's incumbent on you to kind of rally everybody and, and motivate these guys? Yeah, I mean, if you if you can't get motivated by getting blown up by 31 points, um, I, I think uh, you need to kind of take your, take a look in the mirror and, uh, you know, motivate yourself in some way. But, um, yeah, it, like like TJ said and Cam, it's, it's embarrassing to, to lose the way we have. Um, this past week, you know, obviously it was close against the Chargers, but um, we were even down, I think, 17 points to them. So um, getting ourselves in a hole like that isn't always the isn't always the best recipe for success. And obviously, this past Sunday, it was uh, there was we had very little success. Good thing is there's a lot of season left. Of course, you got six games to turn around, and nothing is finalized at this point. I do want to go all Allen Iverson on you for a second, though, man. I, I, I want to talk about practice. And I know you can't get into the X's and O's or anything of that effect. Uh, but obviously, Chase Claypool made some comments of saying he wants it to be livened up. Joe Schobert a couple weeks ago maybe talked about the focus a little bit. My question for you is just basically, is this practice any different from the type of practices you had in Baltimore or even in Michigan? Or is it pretty much a standard practice? Yeah, I think I think coaches are going to have their um, own spin on things. Um, yeah. For the most part, you you dive into you know the meat and potatoes of what the, the other team does. You do um, your blitz period, your third down, your um, short yardage and goal line, those type of um, situational periods. Um, you do like a team run, seven on seven. So everything is, uh, for at least for me, how it's been. Um, it's pretty similar um, from college to to the Ravens and now here. Um, so yeah, I think everyone has their own idea of what practice should be like. Uh, I'm the type of guy that just likes to go to work and, and, um, let, let practice kind of dictate, you know, how we're going to play at the end of the week. If you, you know, I feel like if I have a good practice and 
you know, we have a good game plan and all that kind of, uh, you know, mixes together. I think we can set ourselves up for success. And obviously uh, that hasn't happened the last couple of weeks, but I, I think we've had good game plans. But like I said a couple of minutes ago, it's more so just us lining up and playing the way that we know how to play um, instead of the schemes or a certain play call. It's, it's more of us just lining up and playing ball. Coach Tomlin said the pads are going back on this week, uh, Worm. How, how do you feel about that? And in, in something, uh, obviously, that you guys kind of do sporadically based on week to week? Yeah, it, it always, you know, you always get more padded practices during the beginning of the season just because your body's a little more fresh. Um, and you kind of reserve the padded practices for um, games like this. We know it's going to be a physical game. It's an in-division game. It's a rivalry game. Um, they like to run the ball. They got physical offensive linemen, physical backs. Um, so if this is, if you're going to save your, your padded practices for a week, this would definitely be the week. So, um, I'm excited to, to get to work. I'm excited to get the taste out of our mouth from this past Sunday. Um, and if that means we got to put the pads on and go to work, then, then so be it. Yeah. So I feel like I ask you this every week and you told me that every AFC North game is a must win, but because the Ravens are your former team, um, you know, does this game you know, you started your career there. Does this game, you know, have sentimental value to you just as an individual player? Obviously, you want to win for the team, but is every time you play the Ravens, is this special to you? Absolutely. Um, I only got to play them once last year, and a lot of guys were out um, with COVID on the Ravens when we when I, when I did get a chance to play them. Um, so this year, you know, a lot of the guys that I played with are still there. Um, my boy Pat Ricard, uh, Brandon Williams in the D-line, those are guys that I'm excited to see. Uh, and go up against um, Bozeman, who's the center. Um, him, my wife and his wife are close, so um, it's going to be a fun battle to go up against him. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's always it, – it's AFC North. It's the Ravens. It's a rivalry game. Um, we only have six games left, and we're in a position where um, we have to, you know, win, if not every game, damn near every, every game. Um, and it's going to start this week. You know, we play them at the end of the season as well. Um, but this one is the next one, so it's the most important. And we're looking for a W, and we're going to prepare our asses off for it. Um, but it's always uh, it's always fun to play your former team. It's always fun to play against guys that you, that you know that you're friends with. Um, so it's a, it's going to be a fun special week. Yeah. So it's like Coach Tomlin and some of the Steelers coaches say, "Hey, Worm, you know, we're what's up with the Ravens playbook? Can we get some insight? You know, what, what, <laughs> you know, I know it probably changed since you've been there, but you got to have some sort of insight. You know, you you started your career there." Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously, I don't know too much about the offensive side of the ball. I mean, it's, I mean, I'll just let you know, just try and stop Lamar as best as possible. That's going to be the, yeah. the number one game plan. Um, but I think on the defensive side of the ball, I know Coach Canada and the offensive staff are going to come up with a great plan. Um, and if they want to chat a little bit about what, what we did two years ago, then so be it. Um, you know, I, I might have some insight, but I know Coach Martindale is going to have um, a plan of his own. I'm sure he's, they're going to have some different blitzes and different schemes. Um, for games specifically like this, especially when you play a team twice a year, um, you got to have some new things. And, and I'm sure uh, Wink is going to have that. Um, so I might have some insight, but it's, it's you know, two years removed and um, yeah. a defensive co coordinator like him is going to have some things up his sleeve. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, another guy, obviously, that has things up his sleeve generally is Mike Tomlin. You're certainly not at liberty to answer this question. You might not be able to, but I'm going to take a shot at it anyway, Chris. How much impact does he have weekly in terms of – I know you can't give me a percentage breakdown of him calling defensive plays versus Coach Butts, but how often maybe is he in your defensive line or defensive meeting rooms? Uh, I mean, he always is, he's always around. Um, yeah. He's our head coach, so he has, he has an obligation and – and I think a responsibility to be in all three phases of the game and, and, and put his two cents in. And obviously he's one of the best head coaches in the league and um, knows all three phases of the game. So I think uh, his input is definitely going to be, um, you know, weighted higher than, uh, you know, a player's if, you know, if, if a player has a suggestion or a coach T has a suggestion, um, I think he obviously has the final say on a lot of things. It's his team. Um, but I, I don't really know a, a percentage of what, you know, goes in on the game plan. We just get the game plan and, and go with it. But Coach, Coach T's around. It's his team. Um, and he has a lot of say on, I think, all, all three phases of the game. Totally understandable. Let's switch to some worm association. I like that you brought up Pat Ricard. That, that dude is 
an interesting hybrid of like fullback and defensive line. Um, it's cool that you're, you're still in touch with him. I tell you what, I smile every time I watch that guy play football, even though he's a, he's a Baltimore Raven. So I was going to ask you, I mean, that was one of the things you said, uh, you have some friends on the team still. Are there any other guys you're still exchanging texts with and whatnot? Yeah. I mean, Pat, um, uh, Bozeman, like I said, the center, yeah. um, talk to some of the defensive players, um, a couple of the trainers back there. I shout, shout out, uh, Colin Francis. Nice. Uh, I'm actually going to – well, he, he wears a polo on the on the sidelines because he's a trainer. But I'm, I'm exchanging jerseys <laughs> with him on Sundays. He's a guy I still talk to every day. He helped me out in a lot of uh, recovery stuff uh, when I was there and um, still talk to this day. But, yeah, a guy like Pat, um, he's special. That's awesome, Warren. You might have to give him the early bird gets the warm shirt. Uh, <laughs> keep your jersey. He, uh, he texted me. He's like, man, I need one in purple and gold. I'm like, I guess you're shit out of luck. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say S O there, S O L there for sure, man. All right, let's do some actual worm association before we get you out of here. Uh, Ravens current running back guy who's been around for a long time. Obviously, they they kind of have a, a dual headed monster there. But tell me a little bit about Devonte Freeman. Uh, yeah, I mean, a couple of years ago, he was the the best back in the league. Um, so I think he can do a lot. I think he can um, run between the tackles. I think he can uh, he can catch passes out of the backfield. Um, so that's something we're gonna have to look at and. Uh, a couple of weeks ago against Austin Eckler, um, we, we struggled a little bit with him coming out of the backfield. So if um, they have a game plan similar to that, um, I think we're going to have to, you know, pin our ears back and, and um, obviously get to the quarterback, but also uh, get those check down passes um, to Devontae Freeman. I think, uh, like I said, we struggled a little bit with Austin Eckler. And uh, if we want to be successful, we have to shut him down for sure. Obviously, we touched on Lamar Jackson. He's the most critical component of their offense. But his top target, arguably, is tight end Mark Andrews. Uh, how difficult of a matchup is he? Yeah, I mean, Mark, and he'll, he'll tell you this, he's not the, the biggest, fastest, or strongest. But what he does uh, getting open is, is, is pretty damn good. When he can uh, you know, get sitting between zone, so zone coverages, he can break you off in man coverage. You're like, how is this guy doing this? But – um, he's one of the best tight ends in the league. And the connection that him and Lamar have um, might be one of the best in the league. Obviously, there's, you know, Mahomes and, uh, and Kelsey and, and, and George Kill does what he does in San Francisco. But um, a, guy like, a guy like Andrews and a guy like Lamar, when they're um, in sync, they're um, pretty hard to stop. Great call. Can't forget Roethlisberger to Fryermuth. Uh, however, I know obviously you would never forget that one. Uh, <laughs> Chris, let's do uh, some offensive linemen you're going to be coming up against. Kevin Zeitler, let's start with him. Yeah, I played him a couple times. I think my first two or three years when he was in Cleveland, um, yeah. he's a great player, um, big, strong guy, and uh, can get after you if you're not prepared. So um, I'm excited for that matchup. I'm going to be going up against him uh, nearly every play. So um, I know it's going to be a fun battle. I'm excited for it. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to um, go up against a guy like him and kind of see, see what you're worth. Another guy on that line, of course, is former Steeler Al Villanueva. Uh, he'll be making his uh, return, of course, to Pittsburgh. Uh, was a tremendous player for the Steelers for a long time, so hopefully he gets a really good reception. The last guy I want to ask you about, Justin Tucker. We've never had a kicker come up on this show, Worm. Tell me a little bit about Justin Tucker. Man, Justin, uh, besides being you know, one of the greatest kickers of all time, um, I think he's a, he's a solid dude. I mean, he freaking yeah. sings opera in like seven different languages or something like that. <laughs> He can play the guitar. He can. Uh, he has a few good jokes here and there. Um, but just an overall good dude. Um, I think between him and Boz, uh, I've been pretty lucky to uh, be on field goal protection for those guys. It makes my job a, a, a lot easier um, when they're banging them through the uprights um, pretty consistently on a on a regular basis. So it's um, those two guys are, are are top tier. No doubt, a man of many talents. I've seen him on an opera uh, singing competition or something of that nature, and it blew my mind. I was like. How is this guy kicking 66 yard field goals and also hitting those soprano or alto high notes? Pretty incredible stuff. All right, Warren, we'll finish up uh, with the topic. I know that will make you happy, even though it's been a tough week uh, in terms of uh, football land in a sense. So uh, the Michigan Wolverines are now 1 0 against the Ohio State Buckeyes during the duration of the Chris Wormley show. I just wanted to point that fact yeah, out yeah. there. <laughs> hey man, obviously a, a huge win, 42-27, the first win against the Buckeyes since 2011. They appear to potentially be on their way to college football playoffs. I know you told us last week you'd be able to catch some of the first half. Was that the case? 
I did. Yeah, I got home, watched uh, about till halftime, and then got on the plane. I was watching it till I think maybe halfway through the fourth quarter, and I'm like, man, we're about to take off. Didn't have Wi-Fi on the plane, and as soon as we landed, I checked the score, and, and they and they won. And I was I was so excited for those guys because, um, like I've talked about before, like guys like Hutchinson who specifically came back to beat Ohio State, like that was one of his main goals, and to be able to you know kind of call your own shot like that and uh, leave some money on the table, which I mean he's He's made more, I think, than what he would have last year. Obviously, his draft stock has risen ridiculously, but um, being able to beat Ohio State on your last, you know, your last game at the big house, um, senior night, it was snowing, the fans stormed. It was, I mean, that's like the, that's what you dream of as going to Michigan. And um, it's a little bittersweet because I never got to beat Ohio State. Um, but I'm so, so happy for those guys. Um, I know it means a lot to the program, to the city, uh, to the school, to coach Harbaugh. Um, I know that's a big, big weight off of his chest, finally beating Ohio state. And uh, I think it's a, a sign of good things to come, you know, for the next, you know, hopefully 10, 10, 20 years. So I'm excited for him. Did you say anything to Cam Hayward? <laughs> it, it was weird. Like he like just kind of went silent and didn't really want to talk about it and just kind of, I didn't want to rub it in too much. And then obviously sure. the game today and it didn't really help. So uh, I'll keep it in my back pocket for, for a rainy day when he's you know trying to, trying to come at me a little bit. So I'll, I'll use that. Fair enough. Well, I think uh, obviously the maize and blue are feeling really good uh, this week. No question about it. I think three statues need to be constructed there uh, in Ann Arbor. Uh, Hassan Haskins uh, and Aiden Hutchinson and a Chris Wormley. <laughs> I think need to, to happen. Obviously this week, what takes precedent is Steelers Ravens. We're all looking forward to it. And once again, don't forget Michigan, Iowa in that big 10 championship on Saturday as well. Chris, as always, man, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Stay healthy. Tell, uh, tell BJ Finney over there to uh, keep it down a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and, and good luck against the Ravens on Sunday. Thanks fellas. I appreciate it. Right, man. Cheering on the Berg squads, no pom-poms, don't know by now it's his or crazy.com.